podcast is is pretty selfishly just for me, uh, but other people get tremendous amount of value out of it as well. But I know that I'm gonna be incredibly successful one day, like that's an inevitability. But what I'm really focused on is making sure that I'm the best husband, father, and son of God that I can be. I mean, I grew up feeling like I had no gifts and no talents, and I had no, in, I had no inherent visible um, uniqueness. Hmm. And my brother was super talented. He was super gifted. Everything he did was like world class right away from our youth. And I, you would have never guessed that I would become a communicator. You have, no one could have predicted that I would ever be in front of audiences or speak to millions of people, because uh, I was so introverted and so reclusive. For me, it wasn't my gifts that drove me. Okay. It was actually um, a deep sense of desperation wow. that um, um, I don't think I have ever would have spoken if I didn't feel like people desperately needed to um, find hope. Hmm. I, I don't know if I would have, would have written if I didn't feel like I needed to find a way to pull hope and, and um, and meaning out of people's lives. Wow. So I feel like my life story was kind of flipped the other way around. I basically said, God, I know I'm not gifted to speak, but I think people need to hear somebody's voice tell them that they matter. Wow. And God, I don't know if I'm gifted to write, but I, but I feel like people need someone who can take them through this journey. Wow. And, I, and so a lot of what drove me, it's like, I feel like I learned how to swim because someone was drowning. And I looked around and no one else was jumping into the water. So I just jumped in and learned how to swim while I was getting to them. Sure. Well, it's been an absolute honor. It's great uh, to be with you. I'm Thank in you awe so much. Uh, to sit down with you. This is, this to me, it's the power of social Can media. Can I just give you one bit of advice? 100%. You're not taking care of your body. You're just, you, you, you need to get in the gym. <laughs> I, was, I was just prepping to receive like something extremely deep. You, I'm like, oh, geez. You need to get in the gym and, you know, <laughs> do something with that, that you know, that, that body. We're, we're trying. It's that whole balance thing, you know. <laughs> you know, and I think that now that I have a, a five-year-old son, yep. there's nothing more than, that would hurt me more than knowing he's getting bullied. Yeah. And or, I knowing that, for, or knowing that he ever had that thought yeah. of like, my life isn't isn't important anymore True. like I might as well not be here like that idea for me is terrifying yeah and that your child could think that and for me a big issue is parents f suck like yeah. and I tell my wife all the time you can protect your kid as much as you want yeah. in the house yeah but as soon as they leave the house it's they're in the playground yeah sure. you can't protect them anymore so you have to do what you can yep. to give them that confidence yeah so they when they leave the house are confident to you know to I don't know, being anti-bullying yeah. advocate kind of yeah, thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. So sure. teaching them to be able to stick up for the kids that are getting bullied. Like and that it, as just well. because they're not getting bullied doesn't mean that they need to be aware of the bullying that's going on around them and 100%. to be able to stick up for those kids. I remember when I was uh, when I was a kid, my dad used to always tell me, like, if you ever see somebody getting picked on, like make sure you like protect them. And uh, this one day this kid was getting picked on, and I just punched this kid in the nose. Oh, shit. And uh, go to the principal's office, principal calls my dad. My dad comes and picks me up to school and took me to Chuck E. Cheese because <laughs> he, he was proud of me because yeah. I was actually defending somebody and doing the right thing. The more you stay ready, the less you need to get ready, hmm. you know, uh, and that really rings true for me in my military background. And that's why we always had always make sure your gear is good. Make sure you're, you're in peak physical conditioning. Make sure you have all of these things squared away so yeah. that when crap hits the fan and you need to go you're not needing to like oh wait hold on let me let me figure out how to shoot let me figure out how to you know document this system or whatever mm -hmm. so the more you can stay ready the less you need to get ready and, and that really does feed into our whole mantra of you know to live a life ever forward means means that mm -hmm. it, it means having accountability but more importantly it, it means just having the sense of awareness of and really how you're showing up for yourself you know am, am i idling am i going backwards you know what am i contributing to my own self but what am i also contributing to those around me i love that i love that you said it's it's how you show up because i don't know about you but i know a lot of people that are 
that are showing up right now in this stage of getting ready. Mm. Everyone's getting ready to, I'm about to get ready to, I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to I'm, we'll get put it serious. In terms. I'm, I'm fixing to. Yeah, I'm fixing to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm about to, it's it, that, that's, that is a uh, cancer, uh, I would say, mm-hmm. uh, in this country of, as, as a majority of people that are getting ready to do mm-hmm. something. Uh, but to be able to show up in the world in a state of readiness uh, is awesome. And just like you said, in every area, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you're you are always ready to be able to do what you need to do for whoever. Give me a kiss. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. High five, Daddy. High five. Boop. Hey, there we go. I love you. Bye. It's not just coloring and doodling. Yeah. Um, it's it helps the culture. Yeah. It it, it it there's a reason why they have galleries and museums. Yep. It's because just like growing up as a young child, we put posters on our wall. Yeah. That was like our mood boards that we did mm-hmm. psychologically and we didn't know we were doing those things. Yeah. So when you're putting some of these pieces up in your place, that energy from that is kind of yeah. like you know it, it, it builds you up mm. it gives you the motivational drive when you're not even aware of it oh, yeah. you know colors do that as well if i put the time into someone they might be a customer for life yeah oh, that's yeah. so valuable to me because oh, yeah. and it's not just a, a customer in the subscription they're gonna buy the shoes mm-hmm. they're gonna buy the activewear mm-hmm. so this customer if you talk about lifetime value it's oh, so yeah. priceless to me that like i'd rather spend that one-on-one time with all these people and slowly acquire these long-term customers, they're going to be my evangelist eventually Yeah, where they're going to push all, all our products and brands for me. And people don't think about that long-term value of a customer. Like to be able to go deep with less people versus shallow with far more, it's going to always make more sense to go deeper. Yeah. Everybody plays video games. Yeah. So, that was the most amazing thing to me when I first started going to these events. When you walk into a baseball stadium, mm. a lot of the people there watching the game are middle-aged white men. Yeah, sure. When you go to when you go to hockey, when you go to basketball, when you go to football, you know, depending on basketball, depending on what city you live in, a lot of times can depend upon your fan base. But most of the time, it's a male-based group. Mm. You'd be surprised when you go to these large esports events how many young kids there are, how oh, many yeah. older men there are, how many mm-hmm. women there are, young and old, wow. and all the different races because gaming is something you can do forever. Sure. So you can start playing when you're little and you can go out and you can play until you can do anything else. Yeah. So it now gives you a longer lifespan. It also, no matter what race you are, you can be very good at it. Sure. You know, so. Yeah. And with and, gaming. And, and physical, like physically, like it doesn't matter what you look like, your body no. type, like no. that's interesting. And it gives you the key something. thing is always um, showcasing value first and then seeing how you can really work with that person. So that's what I really typically do. Yeah. And, and that's why I have my hands in, in uh, the entertainment industry and also in, the, in social media too as well. Yeah. So has fashion always been a part of your life or yes. is it something that you picked up later on? Um, actually, my grandma, uh, you know, used to actually bring me to dance in LA actually with my mom and uh, used, uh, used to get clothing from here and sell back in London and Nigeria. So fashion's actually been part of my whole life and, and my mom and my, and my grandma had a business together and that's what they probably focused on. So it's kind of um, a blessing for me to come back and actually be here in downtown yeah. and actually continue the legacy. So It, it seems like with, with indie films that you're able to find these trends before every, anyone else does because right. you're seeing stuff you're seeing stuff recorded on an iphone bro that may be the next big thing that, Let me that tell you comes out in hollywood Let me tell you something. the director for creed 2 mm. came out of indie night hmm. the writer for creed 2 came out of indie night wow. the writer for creed 2 is now doing space jam with lebron james wow. so it's all about giving everybody opportunities mm. I've been on YouTube over 10 years now, probably like you said earlier, made thousands of yeah. pieces of content. And you know, in, the, in dance, it's like, okay, cool, I did a, a piece of choreography. Now, how am I gonna do the next thousand pieces of choreography different than that one so that somebody wants to keep watching? 
and I, I think it applies to any field. It doesn't matter what you're doing, but balancing your time in creating content and also spending time training and working on the next thing so that when, whether it's competitors that catch up to you or it's just that people start to get used to your content, get a little bored with it, you're already prepared on the next level, the next thing that you're gonna drop to bring them back in and make them be like, oh man, compared to last year, he's even better. He released this new thing. Um, so I'm always trying to, to make sure while I'm creating that I'm still working on some things behind the scenes to keep people's attention and keep them guessing for what's next. We live in a world where there's so much potential to grow a successful online business as long as you have the eyeballs, you're speaking to your target demographic, you're breathing life into them, and then you're also adding value as well as conversion at the end. So I really bring them through that process of the funnel of how to get their clients, put them through and be able to close them and, and grow their business. They help people sleep better. Uh, our main product uh, is a pair of these Swannies blue light blocking glasses that I'm wearing on my face right now. And these glasses block the artificial blue light from a cell phone, TV screen, bathroom light, kitchen light that disrupts your, your sleep quality. Uh, and then I also help business owners, entrepreneurs, professionals quit drinking. I haven't drunk in or since 2010. Uh, I wasn't an alcoholic, I was just, you know, a societally acceptable drinker and that I had a couple of drinks each night, a few more on weekends, but I realized that it was slowing me down, so I just quit for what I thought would be 30 days and then it ended up being nine years and counting.